I noticed that when I started adding more chia, more flax, more inulin, more artichoke into my diet, I started to feel like the fog was lifting from my brain a little bit. Now, I combated brain fog 10 years ago when I <laughs> you know, lost all that weight, but I still suffer a little bits here and there. So I'm always trying to find ways to get the optimal kind of mental clarity. And brain fog is something that a lot of people deal with. So let's address some interesting ways via fiber to mitigate it. So one of the main things that we look at is the blood brain barrier. Okay, now the blood brain barrier is a bunch of really tightly wound junctions of proteins, specifically proteins called occludin and cloudin 5, but it really doesn't matter what the name is. Basically, we have these really tightly junctioned proteins and that prevents things from getting into the brain. Remember, the brain is receiving signals from all over the body, but it's tightly regulated with what signals can come in and what kind of uh, pathogens could potentially come in, right? Now, what's interesting is that as these junctions get weaker, we potentially have more brain fog because we have things coming into the brain and that means that our brain energy has to deal with those pathogens instead of providing good, clear, conscious thought. So we're gonna get into some science and some research as to how fiber plays a role in this. Please do hit that red subscribe button and then also hit that bell icon if you don't mind. And then after this video, if you could do me a solid and please try to check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They're a huge supporter of this channel and Thrive Market is where I go for my online grocery store stuff now. So it's like where I get all my pantry staples, but it's relevant to this video because they have a lot of snacks with chia and fiber and all this stuff in them that I would typically eat. So anyhow, check out the link down below. You can check out my keto bundles. You can check out my fasting shopping bundles. Anyhow, highly recommend it. It gets delivered to your doorstep, super easy. So the link is down below, right below in the description. So if this blood brain barrier is compromised, we end up getting that heavy, just foggy feeling where we're just, we feel like we want to work hard, but our brain just isn't letting us. And there's a study that was published in the Journal of Science and Translational Medicine. It found that the microbiome and the amount of fiber we consume plays a role with that, okay? Plays a role with our blood-brain barrier. So those proteins I talked about that are wound really tight together. In specific mice that had their microbiome deleted, they're called germ-free mice. They use them in these test settings. Germ-free mice ended up having a very weak blood-brain barrier. They stopped the production of the proteins that wind together. So then what they did is they transplanted a healthy, diverse microbiome into these mice, and suddenly those proteins got tight again and the blood-brain barrier was better. And thusly, the study didn't look at this, but that you would probably find that cognitive uh, function improved and spatial awareness and memory and all this stuff probably improved. So it's kind of interesting we look at how the microbiome has this. Now, the diversity of the microbiome is critical with this, which is where soluble fibers come into play. You see, soluble fibers are gonna play a role because here's what happens when you consume a soluble fiber. So chia, flax, everything like that. People don't consider them brain foods because the metabolic function of these foods probably isn't providing much in the way of brain support but the indirect byproducts are. See, the soluble fibers ferment and they get broken down by our microbiome. And when our microbiome breaks them down, it feeds certain members of the microbiome and that causes the proliferation and growth of others, but it also increases what are called short chain fatty acids, which contribute to, again, that support of the brain, which we'll talk about in just a second. So being able to get a good amount of soluble fiber in is going to be exceptionally powerful for lifting brain fog. It's kind of interesting because the short chain fatty acids that are created from the digestion of fiber, butyrate to be specific, is a huge signal for the other component of the brain called the microglia. Okay, the microglia are little cells inside the brain that also protect against brain fog and pathogens. Well, there are studies that indicate that without short chain fatty acids, the microglia suffers immensely, meaning we have less artillery to fight off pathogens within our brain, therefore contributing to brain fog. So you look at like a low carb ketogenic protocol, you already have this huge elevation in how your brain works, right? You feel so much better. Well, I would argue that if you increase the fiber content to a good degree with soluble fiber with a ketogenic diet, you're also getting an added benefit. What's kind of funny is beta hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone body, fuels the brain in a lot of ways. Well, guess what? Butyrate and beta hydroxybutyrate. Beta hydroxybutyrate is only one hydroxy group away from butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid created from the digestion or lack of digestion, fermentation of fibers. So that butyrate can directly feed the cells within our brain too, and ultimately send a signal to help our brain be clear. So if you're trying to combat brain fog, 
I just urge you to not try to load up on a ton of supplements and th things like that to fight it. Okay, that's not how you win this war. You win this war by creating a broader spectrum of diverse microbiome by adding in the right kinds of fibers. So what I would suggest as kind of a pragmatic, more practical thing for this is add these chias, add the psyllium, add the inulin, add the flax, add it in like a ground meal and add it to your lunches, okay? You're gonna get a double whammy effect by adding it to your lunch, okay? First, you get, of course, everything I'm talking about now, but you also are gonna get the satiation effect that's gonna make it so you're not craving and eating a bunch of carbs and stuff in the evening time. I'm telling you that just adding a couple tablespoons of flax meal, just even every other day with lunch, has been a game changer for how my brain feels. And I encourage you to try it out because this is something that we've experimented with and now we see the science and it all makes sense. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and make sure you're being the best version of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.